80 bucks. Let me see if they can find this cheaper. Uh, $4, okay, see that. I might have ruined drop shipping and honey with this Chrome extension I made. So I was watching a Graham Stephan podcast, as you do, and Graham said this. Is I'd find furniture, oh. reverse image search it, mm -hmm. and then find it for cheaper on another website because almost all of them drop ship. Anywhere you're shopping, it'll pull that image, find it from another site, link you there instead. I think that exists, item. does it not? No, it doesn't. Oh. And it made me think about a purchase I made two years ago, going to freshman year of university, trying to look cool, which was this. I bought it for like 40 bucks and then 30 for shipping. Totaling a grand 70 bucks for something I could have just went on like Timo or AliExpress and just got for two bucks. Sorry. Wait, what? I can pay four interest-free bi-weekly payments? Bro, it's, it's like two bucks, like... I thought it was an authentic, genuine, handcrafted piece. But no, like in the entire manufacturing process, no human touched it. After realizing this massive L I took, I looked around for what Graham was talking about and all I found was this. Which is pretty cool, but it's paid. And it's better made than what I'm going to be making because it's probably going to be using an API and proper algorithms and data analysis and just, just to get the best prices. But I don't care about that because I want something that's free. Anyways, I thought it was a pretty good idea, and Honey's pretty trash in Canada, so that's a good basis to start, right? I mean, maybe it's me, but I've never actually gotten any benefit from using Honey. It never actually found me a coupon, and the coins they gave me were pretty negligible. But yeah, let's finally get started by forcing ChatGPT to write me like the base template of the code, which it didn't really get me far, but it was better than nothing. You can even do recursion with what we have so far, but sometimes it doesn't even work its best. The plan right now is to attach the price of each reverse image search items little container what? thingy and well how do i even do that if we take a look each box has a class name that resembles the name of some sort of gun and we can take each of these containers and add some placeholder dollar signs to them which we can later then put the price of the item from that site there and how will i do that i actually don't know as i was writing this so we'll figure that out and then by accessing the parents' children's nodes, we can get all the links attached to each block. Yay! If we take a close look, we can see that our block has two children. And we want to access the second one and get the link from that. You can think of our initial block as your grandpa, huh? your dad, and then you. And now we have access to all of our links and we can plug them in the console and take a look at them. Okay, and obviously we're not buying a chain from Apple Music, SoundCloud, or Getty Images. So let's filter those out. And I know this probably isn't a very performant way to code this, but uh, yeah, I don't have an excuse actually. At least it's better than Yandere Dev Code. And I made the extension only embed stuff on the Google Lens pages because I don't want to insert dollar signs all over your three and doom scroll sessions. <laughs> Anyways, I added little green highlights to those blocks with websites that have cheap prices. And hopefully I'll be able to fetch the exact prices by the end of this video. I went back to CSS middle school and had to relearn how to use CSS grid. And look, it's actually starting to come together pretty well. I wanted to make a checkbox that hides all the non-store results because maybe I'm not trying to see like a tattoo of what I'm trying to buy. Oh my god, bro. So I added the checkbox, but realized it was pretty ugly. So I'll just steal this code. And there. There's our beautiful new checkbox. And after some debugging, I got it working. I also want to make a search bar you can filter websites by because maybe I trust Timu as my sole supplier of cheap stuff. And you probably shouldn't do that because there's a good chance it's spyware, but yeah, I realized it was kind of ugly. So I'll resort to stealing code again. And there we go. There's our gorgeous new search box. And after some debugging, I got it working. I totally didn't spend 30 minutes frying my brain trying to apply a line item center to the right div. Not at all. And for the logo, hmm, what could I do? Uh, yeah, let's just copy the Shopify logo.
Now, you probably noticed the blocks have this little dollar 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 symbol underneath them. I was planning to add the actual amount the item cost there from each site, but let's just beta test this first and see if anyone actually cares about this project. Like I think Uber was first a spreadsheet or something when they were testing product market fit. I don't want to sink too much time into this, especially as the project is getting bigger than I thought it would be. And I probably should have started using Git right from the get go. Ha 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 ha. Get it? But to implement that feature, I would have to instantiate a form of web scraper that would likely be custom for each site. As I The reason that alternative earlier is paid is probably because they're using a paid API to fetch the prices and we are not doing that here. So yeah, the Chrome extension is live. They got it approved pretty quick. You can download it, link in the description. I had to pay like five bucks to get it on the Chrome extension store and then I made some custom images for it. There's a lot more steps to getting an extension on the Chrome extension store than I thought. Like I had to explain why I needed to access certain permissions. Like I wouldn't steal your data, right? Right? And they also asked about a privacy policy. And you know, I'm not a lawyer, so I just yoinked the first thing ChatGPT gave me. And I'm joking around by the way, right now, I'm not even sending any of the data you view with the extension to me in any way, shape or form. And if there's more demand for it and people love it, then I'll probably continue developing it as well as fix some bugs here and there. I'd say this is a pretty early product. It was developed and published in like a week. The algorithm isn't the best, but it actually does help quite a bit sometimes when finding cheaper prices you know maybe this is the next billion dollar startup like tesla <laughs> <laughs>